Little fool. Told him not to touch that rifle again. Mmm, pretty. Pretty little bird so far from home. But then we didn't ask her to come snooping, did we, Victor? Hospitality. Good old southern hospitality. That's what I like about the South. This is a room in Parasite Mansion, the name of our story tonight, and home of the Harrods, a family plagued for generations with a horrible curse. Uh, Parasite Mansion is a terrible place to visit, but obviously an excellent place in which to die. Featured in our story tonight are Jeanette Nolan, James Griffith, Beverly Washburn, Tommy Nolan, and Pippa Scott. One of these poor unfortunates is doomed to die before your eyes. Oh, oh, don't try to guess. You might be right, and that would spoil all the fun. <laughs> That's why you didn't get rid of her out in the swamp. Tell me that scalpel. Oh, time enough after you've had a bit more practice with your shiny little playthings, eh, my dandy? She's gonna do. Easy. Ready? Ready! I'll need his help with this. Ready! Young scamp, he's hiding and waiting to pounce on his pretty little bird again. You're gonna go too far with that boy one day, then you'll have me to deal with. <laughs> Honey. Yes. Oh, not like the dandies you're used to. Well, he's not much to look at, but he's a Harrod. Victor Harrod. You can call me Granny. How do you do? My name is. Oh. We know who you are, sweetheart. Victor went through your things last night while I was sitting at the bed. Marcia Elizabeth Hunter, age 26, teacher at Hounslow College, school for selected young ladies of quality only. 
Oh, don't be afraid. He wants to tend your hurt. <sighs> I might as well get used to the smell of corn liquor, honey. The harried men folk are swill bellies, all of them. Who can blame them with the things they have to live with? Be quiet. Well, I suppose you're wondering who shot at you and why. That was Rennie. You'll meet him. Maybe. It was a mistake. Accident. He's a sick boy. His younger brother. Another Herod. It wasn't his fault. You're off the highway detour. Trespassing and private property. There, there was no private property sign on your road? It's there. Well, I didn't see it. Well, that's your mistake. You don't agree, huh? All right. Herod family owes you an apology. If you got any sense, you'll let it go at that. Then I can leave? <laughs> no. No, you can't leave. Well, not yet, anyway. I'd have to fix your car. It may take a day or two. But I, I can't possibly stay here that long. Why, well, I was expected home last night. New Orleans? Yes. That's a lie. Your home is in Shreveport, and your family thinks you're on a holiday with a girlfriend, and you're meeting a man in New Orleans. <laughs> you shouldn't keep incriminating letters in your purse. Often I'm going to be married. You'll have a long wait. No, he won't, because I'm going to phone for another car. <laughs> We've got no phone here. The nearest neighbor is ten miles across a swamp. I can't now, see. You've got no choice. Oh. Besides, you're in no condition to go anywhere. I had to take five stitches in your head last night. You had to what? I could have let you bleed to death. Uh, you're, you're a doctor. Victor, did you hear that? Are you a doctor? No, he's not a doctor. He's not fit to tend a sick hog with his drinking and his hiding out here like he's a murderer, all because of the black beard. I told you to be quiet. Excuse me, doctor. No, I'm not a doctor. We learn to do our own doctoring out here. Wait. I demand to know why you're holding me. Oh, listen to that little baggage, Victor. She's got spunk. I just can't stay here. You anxious to die, darling? Mm. Well, couldn't one of you go for help? Oh, sure. Victor can go for help, can't you, Victor? <laughs> <laughs> There's your answer in his face, the dark fear. Go for help. No Harrod will ever bring a stranger into this house. Hey, stay in this room. Don't go prowling. Don't go asking questions about anything you see or hear. Now, you understand? <laughs>
give me that. No, I'll kill her. I'll kill everybody who comes here. She's one of those folks who took mine. They sent her. Oh, ready, come back here. Ma'am, ma'am, can you hear me? Don't leave your room. Don't go prowling, you told her. And now I guess you know she can't be trusted. Well, she's trying to escape out of this madhouse. Can you blame her? You're a fool. She won't keep her mouth shut, and you know it. She can't leave here alive. Now, no more nonsense, you hear me? The old lady be up in a minute with some hot soup. Drink it. Take this. I won't kill you. It's a sedative. You got a concussion. Now, you want to die? Was that what you planned for me? Why don't you admit it? You have no intention of letting me leave here alive. I haven't decided how you're going to leave yet. Maybe I won't have to. Maybe Randy will take care of you first. So? We'll just lock you in. Mr. Hyde. Why are you holding me here? What is it you're afraid of? Now lie back and be quiet. Now please, please hear me out. You said before that that Rennie was mentally disturbed. I said he was sick. All right, sick then. I want you to know I... I understand. Huh. You think you understand, do you? Yes, sir. I, I, I'm a teacher, as you know. I, I studied abnormal psychology in college. <laughs> I don't really believe the boy wants to hurt me, except in self-defense. From what he said out there on the veranda, I can guess what's disturbing him. You don't say. Yes. Apparently, his mother was taken away, committed to an institution. We know what the word is in this house. Yes, well, it's, it's only natural that a young, impressionable boy would... Well, it must have been a traumatic experience for him. That's what you think. Well, he's afraid that... He'll be taken away, just like his mother. Oh, Mr. Howard, I understand. I sympathize with the boy. I do, really. Uh, please, let me go. I won't breathe a word of what's happened, I promise. I don't need your promise. And I warn you, don't go practicing any of your schoolgirl psychology around here. Because I can show you things that'd shake your sanity. Things you see in nightmares. Yo, Victor. Why don't you show up? It ain't fair to tease a poor little thing, so she's purely trembling with curiosity, ain't you, darling? Why don't you show her, Victor? Or you're feared she won't see it, and she'll think you're crazed. Hey, Victor? Shut up. Huh. And lock her in when you leave. Uh, Victor? Find yourself another jug of corn liquor and get sotty drunk as usual. <laughs> Would I be the one to tell a stranger the harried family secrets now? Would I? You hate him, don't you? Hate? You don't hate a grown man what's hiding in a bottle. You tolerate him like lice and crawling things. Victor, little Rennie has more sand in his craw. But Victor's your grandson. Victor's no grandson of mine. Those spineless hirets, they're fools, all of them. Aubrey Harrod was the man I married. Their great uncle. The biggest fool of the pack. 
to his women folk, they fumed and yelped their heads off. But I had him curled round my little finger, and he married me right off the streets of Mobile. Why are you asking these questions? It's no affair of yours. Look, th there's $50 in the glove compartment of my car. Help me to get away before he comes back. And you can have it. Have it? <laughs> I already had it. Little Rennie fetched it for me while Victor was fussing over your hurt. Oh, he's a nice little lad, little Rennie. <laughs> Don't you tell Victor. Or I'll set the lad on to you, and this time he'll do you for sure. Help me, and you can have that. Mm. And I'll promise not to tell the authorities about Rennie. About Rennie? What about Rennie? Well, isn't that what you're all afraid of? That they'll come and take Rennie away, like his mother. Is that what you're thinking? But the secret of this house is a harmless little lad. <laughs> little Renny. Renny! Oh! <laughs> Renny! You empty headed baggage. You can't begin to imagine the things this house is hiding.
No. Don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. My name's Marsha. What's yours? You must be Rennie's sister. And Victor's. I told you my name. Won't you tell me yours? Lolly. Lolly? Lolly. Oh, that's a pretty name. <laughs> Come here, Lolly. No. You come here to take me away and lock me up. Ready to me. <laughs> oh. So it's you Rennie's trying to protect. Rennie said he wouldn't let you. He said if, if I was very quiet, you, you couldn't find me. <laughs> but I'm not here to take you away. Why are you here? Nobody ever comes here. Why not, Lolly? Lolly, why doesn't anyone come here? Because Victor don't want him to know. About you? <laughs> but you said that Rennie was afraid I'd come and take you away. Then there's something else you're all afraid of. What is it, dear? You can tell me. I want to be your friend. Cross my heart. Really? Really and truly. And, and you didn't come here to take me away? No, of course not, dear. Just like a princess in a fairy story. Beautiful and kind. I can tell. I, I can tell by your eyes and where you talk and by your pretty jewels. Red and blue and green and yellow. Just like a rainbow. Well, then here, dear. Take it. It's yours. For me? For you. To keep? To keep. Secret, didn't you? Well, Ouija, you don't understand what you saw, but you did see it. <laughs> and when Victor hears, watch out. <laughs> Wait, please. 
Have you a last request, Marsha Elizabeth Hunter? Why does Victor have to know I was up there? Because he's a Herod and he's the head of this house. Yes, but you run it. You're the only one who's not half mad with fear. You're the real head of this family. Think what you like. No, no, wait. Please, help me get up and I'll give you this. It's my engagement ring. Take, take it off. No, no, not till I'm safely out of here. I'll have it anyway when Victor finishes with you. Unless he keeps it for himself. Oh, it's a perfect stone. Isn't it lovely? All you have to do is get me safely out to the highway. You promise you, you won't say nothing about what you saw upstairs? Well, I'm not sure what I did see. So how could I tell anyone? Besides, who believe me? Granny! Victor, will you help me? Please! Granny! He'll be drunk. Maybe he won't notice that you discovered the staircase. Get into bed! Granny! Granny! Gun cabinet's been jimmied again. Rifle's missing. Oh, that Randy is a willful little scam. Well, then find him. I want that gun back. No more nonsense. You hear me? I hear you, darling. Hmm. What's wrong with the light? Turn it up. No, please. Please, it hurts my eyes. Do you mind? No, I don't mind. I'll be getting rid of you tomorrow. You mean you're letting her go? I'll have a conflict. What's to keep her? Everything. What's the matter with you? You fool. You think you can trust her? Granny, oh, please. Look. I caught her upstairs with Lolly, asking her questions. And Victor, she saw it happened while she was bribing the child with a pretty. Yes, right there with this. And then she tried to bribe me to keep it from you with that diamond she's wearing. Oh, she's clever, she is, Victor, and treacherous like the swamp. But old Granny knows, and Granny will have the diamond, Victor. Get out. Get out! Oh! Now, what did you see? And how much do you know? You little fool. I knew if I brought you here. Now you can never leave. But, but if I give you my promise, Your not promise to... of silence isn't enough. You'd break it. I can't take that chance, Eli. She lives in terror that she'd be taken away from us. Well, what are you staring at? You think I'm some kind of a fiend that I keep you here for my own purposes? I was actually going to guard you until the old lady found Rennie in the rifle. <laughs> Thanks to your meddling, it won't make no difference now. He gets to you. I told you to go find Rennie. Oh, Rennie will show up when his belly's empty. Meanwhile, if you and your fine lady are ready, your supper is served in the kitchen. We'll eat in the dining room tonight. And when you're set up, go fetch Miss Hunter down. Oh, so that's it. Fine airs and manners for your guest. You don't care what she sees, do you, Victor? She's already seen enough, and there's no sense of hiding the rest of it from her. Go help your granny, Lolly. Mr. Harrod. You got more grit than I thought. Well, maybe less sense. Rennie could have been waiting for you right outside your door. I know. When you left, I was too terrified to do anything but cringe. And then I got angry. 
I decided that a quick bullet was preferable to the waiting. <laughs> Mr. Howard, I want to talk to you about your sister. I I've had a chance to think about what happened when I tried to give her my pin. I've read about such things in college. She's affected with stigmata. And what do your college books tell you about stigmata, Miss Hunter? Well, I remember one case, a fugitive murderer. He became so obsessed with the idea that he was going to die by the gallows that, that rope welts actually appeared around his neck. Medical records tell of dozens of other cases. Is that a fact? Yes, it occurs mostly in fanatics. Extreme hysteria causes the skin to react to imaginary blows. A cuts and welts appear as if the victim had actually been struck. And sometimes the, the victim's wounds bleed, like your sister Lolly. Mr. Harrod, I want to leave here. But I know that's impossible until the so-called secret of this house is no longer a threat to any of you. You want to play detective, is that it? Your sister isn't insane. She's just badly frightened like the rest of you. Now, what is it you're afraid of? You got eyes. You saw what happened to that bottle you tried to get the lolly. Well, the pin flew out of my hand and, and hit the wall, or at least it seemed to. But I know that was some kind of involuntary action on my part. On your part? Yes, I threw that pin. The child must have had some strange kind of hypnotic influence over me. There couldn't be any other explanation. Mm -hmm. All right. You want to know what we're afraid of? I'll tell you. We're afraid of it. The thing that snatched your pen and threw it. The thing that scratched Lolly. Look. Books. Thousands of pages on stigmata. Case after case, all explained with neat scientific logic. But not one word, not one clue to explain it. The thing that's cursed our family for th three generations. Okay, read. Read them. And when you're through, I'll tell you two more cases the doctors thought were stigmata. In your family? My own mother. My great aunt Elizabeth. And that's the hideous part. Things been with us so long. We've never been able to destroy it. There is no thing. That's a lot of superstitious nonsense. You know what a poltergeist is? It's supposed to be some kind of evil, prankish spirit, isn't it? An invisible parasite. thing that attached itself to my Aunt Elizabeth when she was 20. And when she died, to my mother. And... Lolly. Lolly, it's all right. I told you, the lady's having supper with us. She doesn't mean you any harm. Huh? Been frightening the child again. Somebody had to put her on our guard against this baggage. Get the supper on. Come to the table, Don. Mr. Harold, before we go in, there's something I have to know. Do you really believe that nonsense about Lala being haunted by a demon? An invisible parasite? For three generations, we Herods have had the choice of either believing that we were haunted or insane. Now, which would you choose? You heard me. We don't have to sit for the likes of her. You afraid she'll contaminate us, Herds? 
She's already making a fool of you, Victor. Rennie, look at your big brother, acting like he's a man in front of this fancy petticoat. <laughs> ah, look at him! Ah. Now get! I won't forget this, Victor Hyrid. Sorry, uh, Granny forgets sometimes. Troubling you, dearie? Hmm, that's a pity. Vic, can I have that? But surely you don't actually set a place at the table for the... <laughs> I was trying to help Elizabeth and the child's mother. No, oh, our little demon always waited till they were safe at home. Hey, Baxter. Be quiet. Oh, look at him. As many times as he's seen it happen, it still makes his blood run cold. But not yours. When was I? I said, you don't seem to be afraid. Why should I be? I'm no Herod. Was your Aunt Elizabeth the first to be haunted by this thing? Yes. Your granny married Uncle Aubrey. At least that's how the family legend goes. Three generations entombed in this house. Rotten with fear. And that's our fate as long as there's a young girl with haired blood in her veins. Not if we destroy the thing. <sighs> there must be a logical explanation. I intend to find it. You intend to find it? I'm serious. Whatever this thing is, I'm going to discover its secret. Unless it destroys you first. Perhaps. But your pet demon is in danger, Mr. Harrod. And I think he knows it.
So firing up your courage, Victor. You ought to be getting rid of that car out in the swamp while there's a storm to cover your tracks up. You go to bed. You fool. She'll be missed. And they'll come searching for her. Victor, every minute she's alive, we're in danger. Lolly's in danger. Now, go on up and do what you have to do. Now. Then put her in a car and sink it. Shut up! You want them to come and take Lolly away? Like they took your own mother away? You want to lose Lolly like that? Get out of here. Get out! Oh, you're a Herod, all right. All bluster! No belly! There's your demon, Mr. Herod. Wasn't invisible at all. It was Granny. There, there was no poltergeist. There was never any evil spirit. It was Granny all the time. Why, she knew the secret of a levitation. She could cause things to rise and, and fly through the air without touching them. Well, if you were willing to believe in demons, why not this, Mr. Herod? I saw it happen with my own eyes. She knew the secret of levitation. And she was using it to destroy you and your family. Uh, it's not possible. Well, think, think back. Did your demon ever act up? 
when Granny wasn't present? And there's your proof. And the Herods can start living again without fear. Because your evil demon is gone, Mr. Herod. It's gone forever.